Hello everybody, welcome to Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH and this is Lesson 38, Senior High School Constructive Accounting Part 4 and we will be talking about the statement of cash flows. So at the end of the video, you should be able to differentiate what operating, investing, and financing activities are and then we will also be preparing a statement of cash flows under the direct method and the indirect method and solve accounting problems related to cash flows. Okay, so before, uh, so before anything else, please like, share, and subscribe. And then if you have questions, comments, or suggestions, please put them down in the comment section below. And for webinar and speakership invites and anything that you want to say to me, you can also send me a message at kevintroy.chua1994 at gmail.com. Again, uh, ulitin ko lang po, maraming salamat po always for your utmost support for this channel and may these videos continue to help students in their online learning and academic development and may these videos continue to help teachers in enhancing their lesson plans and teaching methodologies i've been receiving messages that the channel has been very helpful at this time of the pandemic and also for the online learning that we all have today so sa lahat po na naka-enroll this semester na gumagamit po ng Sir Chua's accounting lessons ph sa lahat po ng estudyante at sa lahat po ng teachers na gumagamit nung aking channel for your learning and for your lesson plans maraming maraming salamat po okay so let me have some shout, shout outs po sa mga nagko-comment po sa Sir Chua's accounting lessons ph so from Wooder Phil very clear discussion. Thank you very much, sir. At maraming salamat din po for your support for the channel. And thank you po that you uh, find the, the lesson discussions very clear. Also from Leomar, sir, tuloy lang po kayo. Ang galing nyo pong magturo. Hehe. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you po. Maraming salamat po. Um, lahat po ng knowledge na ito ay galing sa Panginoon. And also, we have Angelica Singian. Napaka-helpful po na mga videos nyo. Thank you, sir. Uh, maraming salamat din po for uh, watching my videos. And salamat. Ako yung masaya that you find the videos very helpful. We also have Yesh2. Ito madalas mag-comment to eh. <laughs> Yesh2, kung sino ka man. Hi! Okay, wow sir, sana po talaga naging prof ko po kayo. Thank you po. Thank you din po. Sana po talaga naging estudyante din kita. <laughs> okay, and also from Hayden Mar Manarang. Maraming salamat po, magkukulihiyo na po ako and gusto kong mag-review habang bakasyon pa. Pero baka hindi na bakasyon kasi 2 months ago pa to. Okay, buti na lang ni-recommend sa akin ng kaibigan ko ito pong channel ninyo. Sobrang laking tulong po. Thank you so much, Sir Chua. Maraming salamat din po and I'm very happy to read these comments. And marami pa akong comments na isa shout out Marami pa naman tayong videos na gagawin. Anyway, thank you for your support for Sir Chua's Accounting Lessons PH. Okay, I think we're ready to start. So in the last lesson, we learned about the different forms of business organizations like sole proprietorship, partnership and corporation and we learned how to prepare the statement of changes in equity for sole proprietorships uh, we have also been introduced or took a glance at the uh, sorry at the capital statements of partnerships and corporations and we also solved accounting problems uh, on the capital statement okay so we're ready to talk about the statement of cash flows today so again financial statements are a structured representation of the financial position and financial performance of an entity and its objective is to provide the users of accounting information information about the financial position financial performance and cash flows of the entity and those information is useful in making decisions now as we have been discussing for how many videos now uh, we have already created the statement of financial position the statement of comprehensive income and the statement of changes in equity so now we will be talking about cash flows okay so we have three activities related to cash flow Okay. The preparation of the statement of cash flows reports three major activities. The first activity is operating activity or operating activities. Operating activities are activities of an entity related to their main revenue generating activities of providing goods and services. Where can we usually see these activities in the financial statements? Siyempre sa income statement. Kasi ang operating activities is 
kung saan tayo kumikita at kung ano yung mga ginagastos natin na nakikita natin sa income statement. Yun ang operating activities. So later, may mga example tayo niyan. Also, you can usually also see them in the current asset section of the Statement of Financial Position and the current liability section also of the Statement of Financial Position. Anything that is related to the main revenue generating activity of a company that is usually seen in the income statement, those are operating activities. But what we are talking about today are cash flows. So we're not talking about accounts receivable, we're not talking about accounts payable, but we will also be needing those information to create the cash flow. Okay? It will be much clearer later. The second activity related to cash flow is investing activities. Investing activities are activities of an entity related to sale and purchase of long-term assets and other investments. And usually, saan po ba natin makikita yung long-term assets and other investments? Siyempre sa non-current asset section of the balance sheet. Property, plant, and equipment, investment in equity securities, investment property, yan po kapag ka po may cash inflow or cash outflow related to those activities, dun po sa long-term assets and other investments, then that is an investing activity. Lastly, we also have financing activities. Financing activities are activities of an entity related to the acquisition of funding for the use of an entity. From the word itself, financing activities, ano yung mga activities na ginagawa ng company para magkaroon ng pera aside sa pagbebenta ng produkto or pagre-render ng service? Okay? And where can you usually see that? In the non-current liabilities portion of the balance sheet and syempre the equity portion. Paano nagkakapera ang kumpanya na hindi tungkol sa pag bebenta ng produkto o sa pagre-render ng service. Kasi kung tungkol sa pagre-render ng service or sa pagbebenta ng produkto and the expenses related thereunto, that is operating activities. Pero pag nagkakapera yung company that is not related to operating activities, then that is a financing activity. Okay? Kunyari, umuutang o kaya nagkakaroon ng additional investment by the owner or issuance of share capital for corporations. Okay? So, those are financing activities. So, always remember that the statement of cash flows is divided into three sections. Cash flow activities relating to operating activities, cash flow activities relating to investing activities, and cash flow activities related to financing activities. Okay, let's have some examples of them. Okay, first is operating activities. So, una, ano po yung mga example na paano daw po pumapasok ang cash company na operating ang activity? Sabi nga natin, anything related from purchase and sale of goods or sale of services. So, syempre, yung nare-receive na cash ng company from sales and service revenue, pagbebenta ng produkto or pagre-render ng service. Or kung accounts receivable or on account po yung transaction tapos biglang nagbayad si customer, nakakolekta tayo ng cash, that is also a cash inflow from operating activities. Or in any case, yung pinurchase naman natin na inventory is, yun nga, may mali, di ba? Or may sira. Ano nangyayari pag merchandising operations, di ba? Nire-return natin kay supplier. So, syempre, nagkakaroon tayo ng entry, the debit cash, para ibalik yung cash, pabalik sa atin, yung binayad natin. Then, credit purchase returns and allowances. Okay? So, pag nire-refund po yung bayad natin, edi eh cash inflow din yun from operating activities. Now, cash outflows from operating activities include payments to suppliers so if we pay suppliers that's a cash outflow okay and then if we pay also for operating expenses salaries expense rent expense utilities expense tax expense that is also a cash outflow from operating activities and then payment for interest expense okay so medyo magpo-post tayo diyan Kapag nagkakaroon ang company ng borrowing or umuutang sila, that is a way for an entity to finance their operations other than operating activity. So, financing activity siya. Pero, pag tayo ay magbabayad na ng interest based dun sa utang na ginawa natin, 
yung interest po ay ire-report natin sa operating activities. Again, yung mismong pag-utang po natin kaya tayo nagkapera ay financing activity. Pero yung interest na binayad natin for that is an operating activity. Okay? So, huwag tayong malilito doon. And then, syempre, medyo bumait-bait ka, nag, nagbigay ka sa charity. <laughs> Ayan. Okay? So, charity contributions or, syempre, may lumabas na pera dyan, di ba? For, at nagbigay ka sa charity. So, cash outflow din yon from operating activities. And then, cash refund to customers. Tayo naman yung nag-refund sa kanila. Nagbalik sila sa atin ng merchandise. Sales returns and allowances. Diba? So, binalik natin yung bayad nila sa kanila. Okay? So, marami pa. Pero, those are uh, hindi limited dyan. Ha? Hindi limited dyan yung operating activities. Marami pa. Okay? As you go on with your higher level of accounting, you'll understand more and you'll learn more. Okay, let's talk about investing activities. Sabi nga po natin, ang investing activities ay lahat po ng tungkol sa mga nasa non-current asset portion. So, mga property, plant, and equipment, intangible assets, um, investment property, investment in equity securities, cash inflow. Pag binenta mo po yung iyong mga productive assets like property, plant, and equipment. Hindi mo na ganong ginagamit yung company equipment, binenta nyo. Hindi nyo na ganong ginagamit yung office furniture, binenta nyo. Eh, may kumita yun, di ba? Okay? So, the cash proceeds from that, yung na-receive nyo cash in selling that productive asset, is a cash inflow. Pero pag nagbenta kayo ng inventory and you receive cash from selling inventory, that is not an investing activity. That is an operating activity because your main revenue generating activity is selling your inventory. Okay? So, ang pinag-uusapan po natin dito is productive assets other than inventory, which is like your property plan and equipment. O hindi po kaya, you're handling um, investments in equity securities of other companies. Meron ka pong shares of stock ng ibang company na binen tamo sa iba. So, uh, binenta mo sa ibang company. So, syempre, ma makaka-receive ka rin ng payment doon. And that is also a cash inflow from investing activity. Now, for cash outflow, babalik ta rin lang natin. Kung tayo naman po ay bumili ng bagong property, plant, and equipment, o di po kaya bumili tayo or nag-acquire tayo ng bagong investment in equity securities, e di syempre, maglalabas ka ng cash to do that. Those are cash outflows from investing activities. Okay? So, always remember that it usually affects the non-current asset portion of the balance sheet. Okay, and then lastly, we have financing activities which relate to non-current liabilities and equity activities. How can the entity obtain cash or funds aside from selling their goods and services? Okay, so for cash inflows, cash investments by the owner, o di po kaya kapag ka po corporation, nag issue sila ng shares sa shareholders or sa potential shareholders, then syempre, babayaran sila ng shareholders na yon, so may pumapasok na pera sa company. O di po kaya, kailangan Kailangan po ng pera agad pero wala pang pera from operations or from share capital. Pwede silang mangutang. Okay? So, pag nangutang ng pera, long-term long borrowing, nagkakaroon din po ng cash yung company. Okay? And then for cash outflows naman po, when the owner withdraws cash from the business or for a corporation setup, nag bibigay po ng cash dividends. If you would remember, pag sinabi pong dividends sa corporation, part of the company earnings is binibigay po natin sa shareholders in the form of cash. Pagka po cash dividends. Pero marami pa pong type ng dividends. Pero tsaka na natin pag-uusapan yun. Okay? So, pag nagbibigay tayo ng cash dividends, syempre may lumalabas na pera. And then syempre, pag binayaran na natin yung long-term borrowing. Pero yung principal amount lang ha. Pag binayaran na natin yung mismong utang natin that is a cash outflow from financing activity. But if we pay the related interest on that long-term borrowing, that is still an operating activity. Ulitin natin. Kapag ka po binayaran mo yung mismong principal amount ng utang mo, financing activity yon. Pero pag binayaran mo yung interest galing dyan sa borrowing na yan, operating activity pa rin po siya. Okay. So, I hope you understand 
the difference between operating, investing, and financing activities, and we're ready to prepare the statement of cash flows. In our discussion of the statement of cash flows, we will be presenting you two methods, direct method and indirect method. The direct method has already been discussed with you in the previous uh, lesson videos when we prepared all of the financial statements of landing on new travel services company. Um, but we will be uh, repeating the discussion of the direct method preparation of the SEF and we will also be teaching you now for the first time the indirect method of the statement of cash flow. So please download handout 038 and the link is available in the description box. Kung ayaw nyo siyang iprint, okay lang naman kung nasa phones or tablet nyo siya. Don't worry. Ang mahalaga po is nakikita nyo both of the handouts and the videos para nasusundan nyo siya ng maayos. Either way, sana when you're using the video, you're also taking down notes for you to fully understand what we are discussing here. Okay, so let's start for problem one. Credits to Pinterest for the picture of this very beautiful Lalisa Manoban here. Okay, Madam Lalisa Manoban established her own service company. She invested 2 million to open the business and has purchased some computer equipment worth 120,000 and office furniture worth 80,000. During the year, 500,000 revenues were earned, 200,000 of which were on account. Salaries paid to employees amounted to 150,000. Office rent payment is 40,000 and utilities paid amounted to 30,000. Receivables collected amounted to 70,000. The owner withdrew 100,000 for a personal emergency. At the time when the carrying value of the furniture was 70,000, Madam Lisa sold it for 75,000 cash. The questions are we will be we will be needing to compute the cash flows from operating investing and financing activities and then how much is the cash balance at the end of the year and we will be preparing the state uh, the statement of cash flows okay ang pinakamadaling sagutin dyan, how much is the balance of cash at the end of the year kasi ya uh, analyze mo lang naman pag cash inflow add pag cash outflow um subtract lang ganun lang so the best way for we for us to understand this problem is we create the T account of cash during that specific accounting period. Okay, so sabi, the owner invested 2 million to open the business. So that is a debit to cash and credit to capital. Diba? 2 million. And then, um, purchased equipment worth 120,000. So debit equipment, credit cash. Office furniture worth 80,000. Debit furniture, credit cash of 80,000. And then, 500,000 revenues were earned. 200,000 were on account. So, kung ang revenue daw po ay 500,000, pero naka-accounts receivable yung 200,000, automatically yung 300,000 received as cash. Debit cash, credit service revenue, 300,000. Pero meron kayong debit accounts receivable, 200,000 credit, service revenue na 200,000. Okay? Kasi 200,000 yung on account. Salaries paid to employees amounted to 150,000. So, debit, salaries, expense, credit, cash. Office rent payment is 40,000. Debit, rent, expense, credit, cash. Utilities paid 30,000. Debit, utilities, expense, credit, cash. Receivables collected amounted to 70,000. Debit, cash, credit, accounts receivable. Kaya nasa debit side siya. The owner withdrew 100,000 for a personal emergency. Debit drawing, credit cash, 100,000. And when the carrying value of the furniture was 70,000, binenta for 75,000. O, panong entry niyan? ba Yung office furniture, binenta na. So, debit cash for 75,000. Tapos, ide-debit mo din po yung accumulated depreciation niya na 10,000 kasi bumaba na yung carrying value to 70. Eh. Tapos, ikikredit natin si office furniture for 80,000. So, anong mangyayari? Kung may nakadebit po sa atin na cash na 75,000 at nakadebit yung accumulated depreciation na 10,000, tapos kinredit natin yung furniture na 80,000. Meron tayong gain on sale of asset na 5,000. Pero hindi natin siya concern ngayon dito. 
okay? Ang concern natin, magkano yung cash na pumasok nung binenta mo yung office furniture? E di yung 75,000 na sale of office furniture. So just get the total debits and the total credits and you will have the cash balance of 1,925,000. Yan po yung dapat na end point ng ating statement of cash flows. Let's now prepare the statement of cash flows to answer the other questions. Okay, so syempre mag-header ka muna or heading. But since the problem didn't give you any date, then for the year ended na lang. Tapos kung di bala na kayo sa date. <laughs> okay, so the first thing to do is the cash flows from operating activities. Pagka po direct method ng statement of cash flows, kung ano yung transaction, ikakategorize nyo lang sa kung anong activity siya. Tsaka nyo ipiprepare yung cash flow. Ganun lang, okay? Since the T-account is already here, then pipiliin lang natin muna lahat ng operating activities. Okay, so our operating activities are cash received from service revenue is positive 300,000. Yung binayad po natin for salaries, rent, and utilities naka-negative. Tapos yung na-collect po nating receivables positive. So perform the calculation, the net cash from operating activities is 150,000. As you can see, what we did is we just categorized the transactions kung operating kung investing o kung financing ba siya okay the next one is financing activity o ano po ba yung related sa financing activity lahat ng tungkol sa non current asset so ang papasok po diyan is yung purchase of equipment negative 120,000 baka malito kayo ha pag nagpurchase ng equipment totoo naman, nagkaroon kayo ng equipment pero ang nawala sa inyo, cash huwag kayong malilito sa positive negative, ang piniprepare nyo ay statement of cash flows, ibig sabihin you're talking about cash or you're not talking about the asset, you're talking about cash, so pag bumili ng equipment, nagkaroon ng equipment pero nawalan ng cash yung company kasi bumili eh. kaya ang presentation natin pang may purchase, pamahinos okay, and then yung purchase of office furniture na 80 na binenta mo naman for 75,000 nakapositive yung 75 kasi cash inflow yon okay for uh, perform the calculation net cash from investing activities is 125,000 Okay, and then for financing activities, lahat po ng pinagkakakitaan ng, ah, sorry, lahat po ng nagkakaroon ng pera ang company or lumalabas na pera sa company na hindi po related sa operating or investing activity, which is investment by the owner, which is an equity account, and withdrawal by the owner, which is also an equity account. And perform the calculation, we have net cash from financing activities of 1,900,000. Get the net cash from operating. Net cash, net cash from investing and net cash from financing to get your net cash flow of 1,925,000. Since kauumpisa pa lang ng business, wala pang cash at the beginning of the year kasi kaka-invest pa lang ng owner. Okay? So that will also be the ending balance of cash, 1,925,000. Okay? So pag sinagot nyo yung mga tanong dun sa problem, how much is the entity's net cash from operating activities? The answer is 150,000. How much is the entity's net cash from investing activities? That's 125,000. And how much is the entity's net cash from financing activities? That's 1,900,000. And then the net effect of all of them is 1,925,000, which also serves serves as the ending balance of your cash. Okay? So that's how you prepare the statement of cash flows under the direct method. Kapag ka po naka-direct method kung ano yung description didiretso mo lang ng salpa sa cash flow. Now, in the preparation of the statement of cash flows when you are in your third year or second year college, It's a bit harder. You will be transforming the accrual basis records into cash basis records, and it takes a lot of um, computations. And that's how you will be doing it in your third year or second year college. But for now, we will be uh, discussing the simplest uh, way of preparing the statement of cash flows under the direct method, which is looking on the T account of cash and categorizing all of them as operating, investing, and financing. Okay. Remember that the statement of cash flows is the only financial statement prepared under the cash basis of accounting because we're talking about cash flow. We're talking about cash. That's why in your third year or in your second year, 
In order for you to prepare the statement of cash flows in the direct method, you will be transforming all of your accrual basis records into cash basis records. And it will really take a lot of computations. Imagine, you will be getting how much yung nakolekta sa customers na ang information available lang sa inyo accounts receivable. So, it will work back nyo lahat yun. Yung mga ganon tipo. Okay? Ayun. So I I hope you 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 grasp or you you, you have a glance of what I'm na uh, I'm discussing. Okay, but for now let's focus on the T accounts. Okay, now let's move on. Let's proceed to the indirect method of the statement of cash flows. The indirect method of statement of cash flows is prepared in the following manner. The presentation of cash flows from operating activities starts with net income adjusted with non-cash expenses and changes in working capital. The starting point of the cash flows from operating activities is net income, primarily because net income is an operating activity, right? Net income items correspond to operating activities. Now, we will adjust it with non-cash expenses. Later, you'll understand why. And then, all of the changes in working capital. When you say working capital, those are items related to current assets and current liabilities. Because current assets minus current liabilities is equals to working capital or net working capital okay and then the presentation of cash flows from investing and financing activities works the same way as that of the direct method which is you just list them down kung ano yung investing activity lista mo lang kung ano yung financing activity lista mo lang so kung investing at financing activities ang pag-uusapan wala siyang pinagkaiba sa direct method so much of our discussion for today in the indirect method will teach you how to prepare the operating activities portion of the cash flow kasi walang ganong pinag iba yung investing tsaka financing activities part ng cash flow. Okay, let's start. Puro ko let's start no. Kanina pa nga tayo nag, ano, nagdi-discuss. Eh. Okay, remember that the direct method of the statement of cash flows is a user-friendly cash flow information. While the indirect method of the statement of cash flows is an accountant-friendly information. Bakit? Pag direct method kasi, tapos binasa siya ng users of uh, of accounting information or the financial statements. Pag binasa siya, madali nga namang intindihin, nakadirekta. Purchase of equipment o di kaya, purchase of inventory. Um, collection of receivable from customer. Purchase of ganito. Payment of salaries. Payment of rent. Payment of utilities. Madali intindihin. Unlike in the indirect method, you will be starting with net income, you will have adjustments on non-cash expenses, adjustments on working capital. It's not really user-friendly, but it's accountant-friendly. Kasi you, in, the, in the preparation of the statement of cash flows in the indirect method, you don't have to do what I'm telling you earlier, na you need to transform the accrual basis records to cash basis records kasi yung net income na ire-report mo sa statement of cash flows in the indirect method is galing din naman sa accrual basis records mo so wala ka ng transformation na gagawin mas madali para sa accountant na gumawa ng cash flow na naka-indirect method special thanks to my uh, former professor in uh, in financial accounting and reporting professor Ninita S. Robles from the Polytechnic University of the Philippines for giving this user-friendly accountant-friendly information Okay, I hope that you will be also able to meet the Ninita Robles. She's very good in financial accounting and reporting. So I hope that those who will be taking BS Accountancy in the Polytechnic University of the Philippines, I hope sana kahit isang semester maging professor nyo si Professor Robles. And I have been blessed na I, uh, I was handled by her for two semesters. One for Intermediate Accounting Part 3 and another one for uh, the review class in financial accounting and reporting okay so this is how we do the operating activity section of the statement of cash flows under the indirect method we start with the net income reported in the statement of comprehensive income so accrual basis yon wala tayong gagawing transformation kung ano yung net income yun ang isasalpak nyo dyan okay we will add back lahat po ng non-cash expenses like depreciation expense. Bakit po natin ibabalik? 
expense oh, ganito siya okay um expense na nga siya diba na minus mo para makarating sa net income bakit may ibabalik uli ang gusto nating mangyari yung income na ire-report natin sa umpisa is wala siyang effect ng expenses na hindi naman tayo naglabas ng pera. Hello! Ang pinag-uusapan nga natin statement of cash flow tapos walang kinalaman sa cash ba't natin ire-report. Parang ganun. Okay? For example, ang depreciation, ano ba entry? Debit depreciation expense, credit accumulated depreciation. Meron bang cash dun? Wala, ba diba? It is an expense na wala naman lumalabas na cash. Okay? So, i-add back mo yun. Para ang dating ng ating income is talagang puro cash lang yung laman. Okay? Cash transactions lang yung laman. Now, after that adjustment, ang tawag na po dun sa income mo ay operating income before the changes in working capital. Kasi later on, we will be adjusting it to the increase or decrease in your working capital which is current assets and current liabilities. Okay? So now that you have your operating income before working capital changes, you need to do the following adjustment. Number one, you add po lahat ng decrease in current asset other than cash. Let me give you an example. Ang accounts receivable ay isang current asset. Pag bumaba ang accounts receivable, ibig sabihin nakareceive na tayo ng payment ni customer. And that is a positive cash inflow. Kaya po, ang expression natin sa kanya, paad. Okay? Positive. Kasi pag bumaba ang accounts receivable, ibig sabihin, naka-receive na tayo from customers ng pera. Kaya, positive. O, ano pa example? Decrease in current asset na inventory. O, bumaba yung inventory mo. Ano kaya ibig sabihin nun? Hala, nakakabenta ka. Ibig sabihin, di ba? At dahil nakakabenta ka, baka in a way, eh, may nare-receive kang cash doon. Okay? So, babalik ta rin mo lang lahat po ng increase in current asset pa-minus, pa pa-negative. Okay? Tumaas ang accounts receivable mo. Ibig sabihin, hindi ka nakaka-receive ng receivable. Tumataas pa eh. Hindi ka nakakakolekta si tumataas pa eh. Diba? So, that's a negative effect on your cash flow. Kasi hindi ka nakakakolekta ng receivable. And in the same way, in your inventories, pag tumaas ang inventory mo, it's either tumaas ang inventory mo dahil bumili ka ng inventory. So, nagbabayad ka ng cash para makabili ng inventory. Kaya tumaas yung inventory balance mo. O di kaya, hindi ka nakakabenta ng inventory. So, that's also a negative effect on your cash flow. ba? Diba? Okay. And then, we also add lahat po ng increase in current liability. Bakit naman po na iba na? Pag, pag liabilities na, parang paad na siya. Bakit ganon? Okay. Let's say, for example, accounts payable. When accounts payable increases, ibig sabihin, hindi ka pa nagbabayad ng utang. <laughs> diba? Tumataas utang mo, ibig sabihin, hindi ka pa nagbabayad ng utang. Diba? Hiya ka naman, magbayad ka naman. Diba? <laughs> okay, so pag tumataas ang accounts payable, ibig sabihin hindi ka pa nakakabayad. Hindi ka pa nakakabayad, so that's a positive effect on your cash flow. Okay, so babalik ta rin lang din natin kapag ka naman nag-decrease ang current liability. So for example, accounts payable mo bumaba na, ibig sabihin nagbayad ka na. Okay, and that's a negative effect on your cash flow kasi naglabas ka na ng pera para magbayad ng liability. So remember, add decrease in current asset minus increase in current asset add the increase in current liability and minus decrease in current liability okay and dun kayo mauuwi ngayon sa net cash flow from operating activities okay so please open page 2 of handout 38 you are giving the you are given there the problem about excellent company, binigyan po kayo ng comparative statement of financial position for December 31, 2020 and 2019. Then you are also given other information which is the net income of 2 million pesos for 2020 and then nagbigay daw po tayo ng dividends sa so shareholders worth 350,000 and then bumili daw po ng dalawang bagong property plant and equipment and then nag-issue daw po ng ordinary shares sa bagong mga shareholders para, para magkaroon ng pera ang company, nag-issue ng shares and then borrowed cash to finance their uh, planned future expansion in 5 years and then to simplify the problem, wala na lang pong interest na binayaran, okay? So, we are required to prepare the statement of cash flows for December 31, 2020 using the information given to you. 
Okay. Uh, one of the most challenging financial statements for any accountancy student is the statement of cash flows due to numerous adjustments that you need to do. Mas siya ang pinakamadaling gawin kumpara sa ay siya, sorry, siya ang pinakamahirap gawin kumpara sa income statement, balance sheet and capital statement. Okay, anyway, so this is how we do it. The first step is to analyze the changes in the entity's financial position. Okay, so ito yung ating statement of financial position. Kinumpute ko lang yung changes. Pag sinabing changes, 2020 minus 2019, kinuha ko lang yung difference ng dalawa. Before we dig deeper into analysis, um, Always remember lang po na yung ating pong problem ay naka-corporation, hindi po siya naka-sole proprietorship. Kaya meron po tayong ordinary share capital. Ibig sabihin po ng ordinary share capital, yan po yung shares of stock na hawak at na-issue sa mga shareholders. Because the ownership in a corporation is divided into shares of stock. May number of shares at may value yung shares. At yan yung value na nakalagay doon. Okay? And then retained earnings, dyan naman po yung account na ninalagay natin lahat ng accumulated profits ng isang company. Dyan natin iniipon yung lahat ng income ng company. Kaya po pag nagpapamigay ng dividends, dyan din natin hinuhugot. Okay, so going back to our statement of financial position here, uh, kukunin nyo lang po yung difference and how do you get the difference? 2020 minus 2019. Okay, yung po mga nakapositive, ibig sabihin nag-increase. For example, tinan natin yung cash. Yung cash is 1,360,000 in 2019. I think I need to use a pointer or okay, a laser pointer. Okay, yan. This will be helpful. Okay, so your cash is 1,360,000 for 2019. And then, naging 3,500,000. Kaya yung change mo, naka-positive 2,140,000. Kasi umi-increase. Okay? And then, let's go here to prepaid expenses. For example, 125,000, naging 55,000 lang. Kaya negative 70,000 kasi nag-decrease. Okay, so after you have computed for the changes, the next thing that you need to do is to analyze the changes. So let's put the remarks. For cash of 2,140,000, that is the should be net cash flow. Mamaya, mas maintindihan nyo ibig sabihin niyan. Okay, and then, nagkaroon po ng increase in accounts receivable, decrease in inventory, decrease in prepaid expenses. Yung machinery po natin ay tumaas ng 560,000. Kung titignan nyo yung other information sa problem, nagkaroon daw po kasi ng purchase ng bagong machinery. Kaya tumaas siya ng 560,000. Kapag ka naman po yung accumulated depreciation ay tumataas, ibig sabihin nag-record ka ng bagong amount ng depreciation for the year. Okay? Same with our automobile na tumaas ng 400,000, ibig sabihin bumili ng bagong automobile na 400,000. And then, ang depreciation din po ay tumaas ng 40,000. So, if you, as you can see, ang, depre ang total depreciation natin ay 150,000. Inad itong 110,000 at saka itong 40,000. Okay? And then, for liabilities and equity, nagkaroon po ng increase in accounts payable na 100,000, decrease in accrued expenses na 40,000. Nagkaroon po ng borrowings and other long-term liability na 1 million. That corresponds to the other information na binigay sa inyo na, nang, na nangutang nga naman kasi yung company ng 1 million for a future plant expansion. Okay, and then nag-issue daw po ng shares worth 300,000 and then ang retained earnings natin ay may difference na 1,650,000. Galing po siya sa 2 million pesos na net income pero nagpamigay po ng dividends worth 350,000. To give you an idea on how it happens, ganito po siya. Okay. Retained earnings at the beginning of the period is 2 million. You add the net income for 2020 which is another 2 million. Pero minus natin yung dividends na dineclare at binayaran sa shareholders which is 350,000 for a total retained earnings of 3,650,000. Okay, ganyan po yung analysis ng ating retained earnings. Okay. Now, from this analysis, we will now start to construct the cash flow and we start with operating okay the starting point for the cash flows in operating activities is the net income and the net income is 2 million pesos ano pong sabi natin 
yung atin pong non-cash expenses ibabalik natin. In this case, our non-cash expense is your depreciation. So, get the depreciation of the machinery and the automobile which is 110 and 40,000. That's 150,000. And then, you add them together. Operating income before working capital changes is 2,150,000. Tapos, i-apply na natin yung learning natin dun sa increase, decrease in current assets and current liabilities like this. Okay. So, punta tayo ngayon sa current asset portion. Ito yon current assets. At saka mamaya naman sa current liabilities. Okay, anong nangyari? Yung increase in accounts receivable natin ay minus 250,000. Remember, when there is an increase in current asset, we deduct. Okay? We deduct. And then, yung increase in inventory natin na 120, uh, sorry, yung decrease in inventory natin 120,000, when, when there is a decrease in current asset, we add. So, pa-add siya. Okay? Decrease in prepaid expenses, 70,000. Pag nag-decrease ang current asset, ina-add, kaya in natin siya. Increase in accounts payable, ibig sabihin, tumaas ang accounts payable mo, hindi ka pa nagbabayad, 100,000. Okay? And then, decrease in accrued expenses when there is a decrease in current liability we deduct kaya pa minus siya perform the calculation from 2,150,000 down here the net cash flow from operating activities is 2,150,000 that's how you prepare the cash flow information for operating activities. Kaya siya tinawag na accountant friendly kasi hindi mo na itatransform yung accrual basis na records mo into cash basis. You can proceed automatically with the accrual basis net income and then do the adjustments. Okay? Kaya siya tinawag na accountant friendly. Okay, and then next is you prepare the investing activities. Sabi ko po sa inyo, pag investing activities, lahat po ng related sa non-current asset. Okay, which is bumili tayo ng bagong machinery worth 560,000. Pa-negative po kasi bumili tayo may lumabas na cash. Okay, same with automobile, negative 400,000. So, the net cash flow from investing activities is negative 960,000. Doon naman po tayo sa cash flows from financing activities. Ang titignan nyo lang po ay yung dito sa baba. Lahat ng non-current liabilities and capital. Okay? So, yung ordinary share capital natin, tumaas ng 300,000 kasi nag-issue tayo ng shares si company naka-receive ng pera. So, positive 300,000. And then, nag, uh, nagbigay daw po ng dividends sa shareholders worth 350,000. Pa-negative kasi naglabas ng pera ang company. And then, na ng utang ng 1 million for their future plant expansion, for future expansion, kaya positive 1 million. Perform the calculation and your net cash flow from financing activities is 950,000. Okay, so i sa summarize mo na yung tatlo, cash flow from operating, cash flow from investing, and cash flow from financing. Pag meron ka ng net cash flow nung tatlo, ito na yung ating end point. The net cash flow is 2,140,000. If you would remember sa analysis natin kanina, ang cash natin ay nagkaroon ng positive change na 2,140,000. You will know that your calculation is correct when the net cash flow corresponds to your analysis. And that is your should be net cash flow. If the net effect of the operating investing activity uh, and financing activities is 2,140,000 which corresponds to your analysis then your analysis in your statement of cash flow or the cash flow information that you created is correct okay so syempre wag natin kakalimutan lagyan na natin ang heading ayan excellent company statement of cash flows for the year ended December 31, 2020 yung net cash flow natin na 2,140,000 add natin yung beginning balance ng cash na 1,360,000 ito po yun yung beginning balance ng cash is the ending balance of cash at December 31, 2020 of 3,500,000. And you know that your cash flow is correct when the ending balance of cash in the statement of cash flows corresponds to the cash balance in the balance sheet as of December 31, 2020. If all of those information are corresponding with each other, then your cash flow is correct. Okay, so let's try some more accounting problems naman tungkol sa cash flow. 
Problem number one, Seoul Company, the head office of a network of multinational companies, had the following information for 2020. And then you are being asked of the net cash for operating, investing, and financing activities and how much is the cash balance at December 31, 2020. Okay, so pause the video, try to answer the problem, and then go back here when you're done answering the problem. Okay, assuming that you have already tried to answer the problem, here's the solution. Okay, wag kayong malilito sa problem ha. Yung problem na binigay sa inyo, net loss kasi. Okay? Ganun pa rin po ang calculation, naka-negative lang siya kasi net loss. Okay? So, net loss of 17,931,234. Add po natin sa depreciation na 1,408,885. Okay? So, your uh, operating income before working capital changes is negative 16,522,349. Tapos, increase in receivables, increase in current asset, dinededuct. Increase in other current asset, dinededuct din po. And then, kapag ka naman po nag-increase ang current liability, ina-add po natin. Net cash from operating activities, the answer for number one is negative 16,409,769. And then, uh, yung purchase of property, plant, and equipment is negative 209920. That's an investing activity. Ito na rin po yung sagot sa number 2. And then, uh, long-term notes payable of 15,510,698. Ibig sabihin, nangutang yung company. So, nagkaroon sila ng perang ganyang kalaki. Positive 15,510,698. Okay? So, when you already have your operating, investing, and financing activities, get the net cash flow. And then, add nyo po yung beginning cash balance na 2,240. 4,671. The ending balance of cash is 1,095,680 which is your answer for number 4. Okay? So, para lang mas maintindihan yung problem, in statement format ko na siya kahit papano para malinaw sa inyo. Huwag kayong malilito kung net loss ang problem. Ganun din po ang sistema. Ganun din po ang calculation. Let's proceed with problem number 2. Kaya pa ba company has cash amounting to 470,000 at the start of 2017? Nag-purchase daw po ng equipment and nag-hiram ng 1 million. May net income na 700,000, depreciation is 50,000 and you are given the following differences in current assets and current liabilities and then you compute for the net cash flow from operating, investing and financing activities and get the cash balance at the end of the year. Try to answer the problem, pause the video, and go back here when you're ready. Okay, so the solution for that is this. Okay, so for the cash flows from operating activity, net income is 700,000 add back po natin yung non-cash expense na 50,000 operating income before working capital changes is 750,000 tapos po increase in accounts receivable mina minus tapos decrease in inventory ina add increase in other current asset mina minus decrease in uh, current liability is mina minus and increase in accrued expenses is in add okay so net cash flows from operating activity is 730,000 and then purchase of equipment lang naman po yung investing activity natin and yung panghihiram ng pera lang naman po yung financing activity natin net cash flow is 1,530,000 add po natin yung beginning balance ng cash na 470,000 to give you an ending balance of cash of 2 million pesos Okay, I hope you understand our lesson for today in the preparation of the statement of cash flows. Our next lesson is a special lesson on the preparation of all four financial statements using comparative trial balance information, which is comparative financial statements representing two years. Ang papraktisin po natin is gumawa ng lahat ng financial statements pero dalawang taon yung gagawin natin comparative information. Pasakita ng ulo. <laughs> Joke lang. Okay. So, again, please like, share, and subscribe. And for all call, uh, questions, comments, and suggestions, please put them down in the comment section below. And for webinars, speakership invites, and any message that you want to send to me, send it via uh, kevintroy.chua1994 at gmail.com. 
This has been Sergio Was Accounting Lessons PH. To God be all the glory, honor, and praise. Thank you, and have a great day. Let's move on and be